Rina Shah is a Republican strategist. She joins us now via Skype from Washington. Good to have you with us again, uh, Rina. So another cabinet member resigns, albeit the acting Secretary of Homeland Security. Have those who've resigned done so out of principle or in order to salvage their reputations and political standing within the Republican Party? Well, perhaps it's a mixture of both. And I think this is the moment where obviously one's loyalty to party and country were questioned. I'm a longtime country over party voter myself. And I must say, uh, not having voted for President Trump in, in either election, 2016 or 2020, made me the culprit in today's Republican Party. People in the Republican Party labeled folks like myself as never Trumpers. That was a label I never wanted. I didn't want to identify myself as having had anything to do with this president, but that was a label given to us. They also said we had Trump derangement syndrome every time we warned about violence in the future and we warned about the threat to the Constitution. What we saw happen last week in real time was people finding their morals, finding their principles, and re remembering the very American values which have made this country prosperous and, and great. For, for generations before I got here. So I must say, I'm a bit disappointed by these 11th hour resignations. They don't mean much. And I think we should hold to account all the folks that were part of the Trump administration and stood by silently as atrocities were committed, the worst of which was last Wednesday. The nation is divided, but so is the GOP. How will that affect it electorally in the future? How does the party unite? in the post-Trump era? You know, I believe it's a bit premature for those conversations. Right now, we have some pretty big, lofty uh, things ahead of us, which is election security, sorry, excuse me, inauguration security. Also, getting through to our fellow Americans that this election was not rigged, that there's no data to support that, that assumption, that notion that President Trump pushed out there and decried that the election was rigged by Democrats and that something was skewed against conservatives nationwide, particularly in states where he fell short and, and lost to Biden, consequential states for him. So there's there's a lot ahead of us. I think the, the least to me is the concern of how the GOP figures out how to uh, move forward. I think they can only move forward, the Republican Party, if they remember that folks like myself, lifelong conservatives, sounded the alarm. And we chose to put country over party because we knew the threat that this president posed. We knew he was never a conservative and that he was really not here to do the work of the American people, nor that of Republicans. He's a person who has driven up the national deficit. That's not very conservative. The way he's handled trade, the isolationist policies, he's kept us on our feet and not in a good way. Okay. And what we know now is that he incited violence so plainly. He drove domestic terrorists to our na nation's capital building, the very seat of our democracy, so that he could possibly get his way. What we need to do now is to figure out how those who enabled him, senators and Congress people alike, members of both chambers, are taught a lesson. I fear, though, that it will take them to get to the electoral ballot box, the ballot box. I believe it's going to take electoral losses for these people to finally wake up and realize that the GOP must change course, must course correct in order to remain a viable party. Always good to talk to you, Rena. Many thanks indeed for being with us again. Rena Shah there in Washington. Thank you.